In this video, we'll learn how to optimize a Lagrangian system in the presence of constraints. Let's take a look at this example system. I have two masses sliding down a frictionless slope. The position of mass M1 is given by the generalized coordinate Q1, and the position of mass M2 is given by the generalized coordinate Q2. The constraint in this system is that the two masses are always separated by a fixed distance L. That constraint can be written as Q1 is equal to Q2 minus L. The goal of this video is to use the calculus of variations to solve problems with constraints like this. Before we get there, we need to talk about how to set up Lagrangians for more than one particle. Imagine we have n particles in d dimensions. The position of each particle is given by some generalized coordinate qi, where each particle needs d coordinates to describe its position, and there are a total of n particles. For example, consider a system with two particles in two dimensions. Our Lagrangian in Euclidean coordinates is a function of x1 and y1, which are the positions of the first particle, x2 and y2, which are the positions of the second particle, their velocities in Euclidean space, and time. Instead of Euclidean coordinates, we might find that other coordinates are better, like the q1 and q2 coordinates in the inclined plane. Then our generic Lagrangian here is a function of the position of the first particle in the new coordinates, which are qa1, qb1, the position of the second particle in the new coordinates, which is qa2 and qb2, their velocities, and time. These are called natural coordinates if the transformation between the Euclidean coordinates and the generalized coordinates does not depend on time. Constraints affect the number of equations that we need to solve to specify dynamics. First, let's start by counting the number of degrees of freedom a system has. For each particle in d dimensions, there are d degrees of freedom. So for a two-dimensional particle, this could be moving left and right versus up and down. Then we need to multiply that number by the number of particles in the system. The following argument is attributed to Maxwell and Kaladin. Every constraint we have removes a degree of freedom from our system. For our inclined plane example, we have two particles in one dimension, since this is constrained to live along this slope. So that is two degrees of freedom, one for each particle. But the constraint that the two particles are always separated by L removes one of them, which means I only have one free variable to solve for the dynamics of the system. A system is called polynomic if it has the same number of degrees of freedom as it has generalized coordinates. Now let's look at how we implement constraints into Lagrangian problems. Mathematically, we want to minimize some functional f of y of x, y prime of x, and x subject to some constraint g is equal to zero. We're going to write this constraint g as a functional as well. So g is a functional of y of x, y prime of x, and x. Previously, we defined a quantity called the action as the integral from x1 to x2 of f of y of x, y prime of x, and x dx. And what we did is we tried to vary the path y while simultaneously keeping delta s equal to zero. Now we want to add in a constraint. How do we vary the path y without also varying the constraint g is equal to zero? If g is equal to zero at all times, then delta g must also be equal to zero at all times. Using the chain rule, delta g is equal to dg by dy times delta y plus dg by dy prime times delta y prime. We turn this into a differential equation by integrating by parts, and we get our familiar Euler-Lagrange equation equation dg by dy is equal to d by dx dg by dy prime. That means that if delta g is to remain stationary when we vary y of x, then y of x must simultaneously satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation for g as well as it does for the original functional f. This means that g also satisfies Hamilton's principle. The path that minimizes variations in g is also the one for which g is stationary, which means that delta g equals equals zero. Let's define a new functional. Let's call it f tilde, and this is a functional of y, y prime, and x. And this is given by our original functional plus lambda times g. 
Remember that g is equal to zero. So no matter what we multiply it by, this term is going to be equal to zero. So we're still finding a stationary solution for our original functional f. But we know that since delta f is also equal to zero, then there is a stationary solution for f tilde that guarantees that both the constraint is equal to zero and f is minimized. Lambda is called a Lagrange multiplier. To solve this, you need to simultaneously solve the Euler-Lagrange equation for f tilde and the constraint g is equal to zero for y of x and the Lagrange multiplier lambda, which might be a number and it might be a function. For dynamics problems, our Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. But we could have a constraint, like the rope connecting the two masses in the previous example. Then we write the statement of that constraint as a functional which equals zero and multiply that by the Lagrange multiplier lambda. We can use this new statement to look at a generalized force, dl tilde by dr, which equals minus du by dr, which is the force coming from the potential energy, plus lambda times dg by dr. And this is the force necessary to enforce the constraint. In our example system, the constraint that keeps the two particles separated by distance L can be written as Q1 minus Q2 plus L is equal to zero. Since we have a constraint, we need a force to enforce that constraint. The constraint here is the tension in the rope required for these two blocks to slide in unison. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.